part two of this question. Right, so there is my drawing complete. Um, so you can here is where we have to decide what what um, points on our drawing that we're going to label that to bring down on that. So this one we can see here that there's a couple of lines here that depend on these measurements here. All right, this line here and th these points here depend on these measurements here. So the best thing to do would be to bring down these points here, all the outside points. All right. So I'm going to bring down our label one, two, three, four, and then I have my measurements between here and here and here and here. All right. It's ten millimeters. And then I'm going to, when I get down here, I'm going to draw perpendicular lines. These are going to be our parallel lines. These are all going to be parallel lines to find these points. So I find I think that that's probably going to be my most accurate way when I'm switching to my different questions. Okay. Yes, you could label all these points. Okay, and try and find them. However, you want to when you're doing your transformation geometry question, you want to be thinking about how to get the most accurate. Uh, drawing of, of the shape each time you, you do your different views okay or your movement of your shape When you're labeling each of these points, it's better. It's good to label the point on the side it has it on the drawing. So don't label it's on the drawing. It's the top right hand side. I'm 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 labeling it there. P two.
when you're starting off with this, it's good to double check that you have the, the, the points labeled in the correct area. So like P2 is in P2, P1 is in P1, and not a different place. P4 is in P4, and P3 is in P3. And I can double cro double check it to my drawing, and to the question in the exam paper. Right, so, the next one we're going down is we're moving... The majority of these you're just joining the P's, the different P's with a line. Okay? So we're going from P to P1. Alright? And we're going parallel to this line and the same width as this line. Okay, so I'm basically moving all these points, okay, point one, two, three, and four, all those points down that the same length as that and the same angle as that. And they usually do it nicely for you that it actually goes down one of your set squares okay however sometimes they do like to throw you off and in this case they do throw you off so you do have to do a sliding set square in this case now obviously because this first one is a translation we look at this we look at our pencil and we can see that it is completely horizontal okay so down here I can just I don't have to I don't have to follow the usual translation points. I can just draw this horizontal down here the exact same way I drew that one. Okay. However, I'm just going to draw this as if you're translating now, just so we know how to translate. Alright, so I'm coming down at the same angle. And then I'm getting my compass and I'm getting my length of this P1 to P line. Same length. And I'm swinging it from one. So it's on this one. So there's one. Same thing for two. So I get that my line. from point two down and then again my length again always get your length off your original line there's two and then I'm getting three now. my length from my original line and there's three okay so I'm going to draw my square again I'm going to come up here from one one centimeter uh, I'm going to mark in these increments then I'm going to go perfect liquor to my line 1, 2 and draw in those points. I'm going to measure here at halfway and there's that line going up the middle. I also need this line here which is 40. And then Now we can start drawing my shape.
has my pencil, my translation done. So I can tick off my translation. That's done. Now, moving on to my axial symmetry. Right, so the next one I'm doing is an axial symmetry. Alright, so as I, as we always do, we join P1, the two points together. And we'll see what we need to do. Right, so, axial symmetry, you should have an axis, or an axial. It's like a, an axle of a, a car. Think about that. Like an axle of a car is a straight line, a bar. Okay, there should be a bar where all these points are going through. Okay, and then you're going to fold it over like a book, a page of a book. Okay, it's switching from here over to there like that. All right, and you can do that using your compass. So, first thing we need to do is we need to find the middle of this line. Okay, so what do we need to do? Add on. Bisect the line, yeah. So, again, the compass, setting it to just after halfway of the line, same radius four times, there is my midpoint of my line. Now, what I want to do then is I want to go parallel to this line, okay, just parallel, so I'm going to slide and set square. Now I like to use my t-square for my slide and set square. Okay, You can use your other set square, but the t-square is a bit longer. And I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to bring up point 1, point 2, point 3, point 4 is there already. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is I want to take my measurement from there to there. I want to swing over as if I'm, f I'm falling a book. So I'm swinging it over to there. Point one. Point two is very close. Point two. Point one, point four, sorry, and point three. All right, so I'm going to draw all those lines. Right, so I can see that my measurements are coming from 1 to 4. So 1 to 4 is there. So 1, I'm marking that one, that one, and it's 4 to here. Now, I could do the same the other side, but I'm just going to do parallel lines. I slide and set square again. Okay, now I'm just drawing my shape.
and there is my finished shape. So that is axis symmetry done. Now you would want to be faster than, than this in real life, okay? I'm just taking it nice and slow, so if you want to look back at this video. Alright, so we're going from P2 to P3, central symmetry. Alright, so again, same thing again, we want to join our lines, okay, our points. Alright, and with the central and the axial, with the symmetry, you always want to find your midpoint. So, same thing again, bisect your line. Now, we have our midpoint now. So, all the points for central symmetry will be coming through that center point. Too true. And now we're just swinging them again. Very similar to axis symmetry, except instead of an axis or an axial line, you're bringing it through a center point. Draw my shape, and it should be parallel. Right, so. Again, it's very important to know which side your pencil is going. So, uh, that's why we have a label. So, my, my pencil, or my measurements for my pencil nib is going from 1 to 4. So, 1 to 4 is here. So, they're coming this way. So, you want to measure those measurements. I'm going to slide them down. Right, and there's our central symmetry. Okay, so now we're on the rotation of the anti-clockwise through 20. So anti-clockwise, if you have a clock, uh, 12, 6, 3, 9. Clockwise is going around as normal. Anti-clockwise is going the opposite way. Okay, so that means we're coming up this way. 
coming up this way okay and P3 is stopping at P4 so it's definitely going to be stopping there but we need to find out what our angle here is okay so we know all right the way it's going to be done we have a triangle I'll do it here hopefully this won't be in the drawing I have a triangle here okay P4 is here and P3 is going to be here okay and 120 is up here all right 120 is going to be there 120 degrees P4 P3 so that means it's going to be swung up like that okay swung up like that our center point for our compass is going to be here now a triangle always makes up 180 okay so we can find out easily okay these are both the exact same angles here and here so we can set, find out easily what those angles are and we need to find those angles are out to find out where this point is going to be over here okay so 120 away from 80 yeah search uh, yeah so what does that mean each of those 30 degrees good man okay so we have our angle what we're supposed to do okay so p4 is here p3 is here we need to come up here 30 degrees to find our compass point so again my protractor mark 30 degrees same with this side mark 30 degrees draw your line up draw your line up and there we have 120 degrees that is one point okay that's how we find one point now we need to do that for our four points okay and they're all going to be triangles as well There's side one. So the next one we're going to be doing is we join it to back to our 120 here. We're going to do two back to 120. Now we'll swing around. Swing the line there. Want to this 120 from two. Measure up one. 120 uh, degrees there's two three we're going back to 120 swing in a line up from three to 120 sure 120 degrees three is here and there we have our four points and there we have our four points that we want to do okay so again one to four our measurements was to one side so we have it here
finish off our shape. There we have our completed shape. Okay, so we had a translation from P to P1. There's P to P1. It came down, that you're just moving, translating the shape from here to here. Same angle, just you're moving it down a distance, same distance, okay, as P to P1. Two was axial symmetry from P1 to P2. So P1 to P2. Midpoint. Bring over all your lines parallel to the P1 to P2 line. Swing your 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 compass. Put your compass on the axial, on the indicated line you want to move of the point, and bring over the points. Third one we have to do is central symmetry. Midpoint. Get your center point instead of axis. You're going through a center point. Bring over all your points. One. Two, three, four. Again, you're using your compass again. And the last one, the rotation. So make sure that you have this off because you're doing that basically every time. All right? And you're going through one turning point. The triangles might change, as I said here. The triangles might change shape, but you're always going through your turning point over here. Very important to label your pieces. 